I'm Sonia Firth. I uh, provide technical support for the verbal autopsy information as part of the Bloomberg Days for Health initiative in Myanmar. So one of the challenges with verbal autopsy is it's a reasonably complex intervention. Um, it requires the basic health staff, the midwife or the public health supervisor to, to be able to um, understand all of the symptom questions in the questionnaire, to deal very sensitively uh, with the family member, all the while using a tablet um, that they may or may not be familiar with using. Learning these skills within a week, which is the training that we actually provide, um, can be a real challenge. Uh, we've also done in Myanmar um, a reasonably swift scale up. And so the monitoring of that at the different levels of government that are necessary to maintain the quality of the interviews and to make sure that everything is uh, working procedurally as we would like it to um, has also been a challenge, but it's also um, obviously a, a great benefit that we've managed to, to scale up so quickly here. The other challenge I think is um, language. So the questionnaire itself is translated into the Myanmar language, but there's a lot of ethnic minorities who don't speak um, that language and so we have an additional um, challenge of the midwives having to retranslate from uh, Myanmar language into a, a particular ethnic uh, language so of course that can also be challenging in terms of um, uh, perhaps the symptom questions are, are getting a little lost in that translation so we're, we're monitoring very carefully um, what uh, how that's happening uh, we're also developing a, a medical dictionary of terms so that the midwives know what are acceptable and what are not, not acceptable terms to be using in these kind of locations. Non-acceptable terms would be um, where you take a symptom and, and you, you make it much more vague than it, need, than it is in the questionnaire and so that's not really the specific symptom that we're interested in. I think uh, the successes for Myanmar is really the ability of the agencies to work very closely together. So the Central Statistics Office and the Ministry of Health and Sport have really uh, come together uh, in this endeavour and we've managed to scale up um, very rapidly in two years from three states and regions to all the states and regions in um, Myanmar, two townships from each of those states and regions. So I think we're now covering around 17% of the, the population, um, which is a really uh, truly amazing uh, achievement for the government to be able to do that. Uh, and we're hoping that the next step will be for them to look very closely at the townships that they're currently working in and see whether or not they're a truly representative sample of the country so that they can actually get um, cause of death information at the national level that's representative for the first time on these community deaths that have so far not had a cause of death attached to them. I think one of the strengths of the D4H interventions in Myanmar is that they're really working on different levels. So as well as verbal autopsy to capture the majority of deaths that are happening in the community, they're also working very closely on strengthening the medical certification of cause of death at the same time, so that our hospital deaths here are also going to be uh, very well certified. Uh, so we've got two very robust methods for collecting overall deaths in Myanmar. I think there's a very great commitment from the Myanmar government to improve their information. We've seen that at every single meeting that we've been to, very high level participation from both agencies, the Central Statistics Office and the Ministry for Health and Sports. Their commitment to sustainability is shown by the exploration of including some of this work into the actual main curriculum for the basic health staff and also uh, the medical curriculum. So this is a way of sustaining the interventions after this initiative has finished, um, that the basic health staff will be learning about how to conduct verbal autopsy and it will become part of their, their job. Uh, and also the medical certification training will be part of the medical curriculum. I, I really enjoy this kind of work. Um, I think working at all levels of government, you, you get a real sense of, of 
what each level is actually interested in. Um, my passion actually is working at the local level and helping the people who are actually collecting the information to really understand why they're collecting it. You get the real aha moments um, for, from people and I, I think that's real added motivation for them to do a really good job because they now understand why they're, they're doing it and um, what's going to be the results of, of all of the information that they're collecting.